Hi, this is Eddie Boris here. Today I'd like to introduce Guilherme, aka Sepultura, that you may already know from these images. And something you might not know about him is he's a bit of an architectural visualization demon and has put together this video showing his workflow for making this chair model. Guilherme has talked me through his steps and I'm going to share with you his thoughts on the process and add some of my own commentary. First though, I'm going to run this short intro video that Guilherme has put together to show some of the thoughts that go on even before opening Blender. Then we'll get straight into the modeling, so here we go. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that brief intro and slight glimpse into Guilherme's mind there. So now we've got some Blender work to do, let's get straight on with the modeling. So first of all, we're going to start with a plane, enter edit mode with the tab key, and then hit W to enter the specials menu, and then we'll be subdividing four times in order to make the padding. Then we can switch to our face select mode and then enable proportional editing. Then we select that central face and begin to move it up along in the Z axis. By the way, you can change the uh, influence size with the middle mouse wheel. Here we're basically just looking to create that kind of bowed shape in the padding. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. Now we just need to repeat this pattern, which we can do with an array modifier. Remember that we can stack multiple arrays. Uh, so long as we uh, change the count on a different axis, so set the y-axis to 1 in this case. We're going to apply these modifiers now, uh, so don't forget to enable our merge options in both of those modifiers so that we don't have any loose verts at the borders of our original mesh. Okay, so that's great, now let's create the buttons. We can do that by selecting these four faces here and then pressing I to inset and open a small hole in the mesh. So just delete those inner faces there. Then we can disable our proportional editing and then switch to vertex select mode. Alt right click to select that edge loop there. And before doing this next step, we're just gonna completely level these verts off on the Z axis. So that's a, there's an e easy and quick way to do that, which is just to press S to scale and then Z and then zero just to flatten those out. Then we can hit the spacebar to bring up our search for the tool options and then we can just type in two sphere and that will allow us to create a circular shape to our selection. We can scale that down a little and then lower it down on Z to just make it a bit more deeper. Next up we'll extrude the root of the button so to speak. Making everything in a single mesh like this can help a lot if you're willing to do some sculpting later. Here we're wanting to cap the top of that button basically and there's many ways in Blender in which to do this. Uh, one way we could just press F and then Alt P to just poke a central vertex there. The way Guilherme is going to do this now is to basically press E to extrude out some extra geometry, press S and then 0 to just kind of scale it right into the uh, middle of all of those. And then after that select everything with A and then press W to bring up your specials menu and then just remove doubles. With everything okay we can already add a subsurf modifier to get a good idea of how it's uh, coming about. And look at that, it only seems like it was a minute ago that it was just a simple plane. Let's not get too carried away right now, uh, there's still obviously quite a lot to do. We need to duplicate this button everywhere else that it needs to be. For that we'll need to open a hole where we want to put them. So by deleting these selected vertices here, we can uh, make a way to be able to start copying these around. Of 
press Z to toggle into wireframe and then B to border select across that button there. Make sure our snap element is set to vertex. Also don't forget to activate our auto merge option too. Now we can go shift D to duplicate those faces and then press Control to snap them into position and as they snap they'll merge and just close the hole perfectly. Just to be on the safe side we can do a little uh, remove doubles with the specials menu by hitting the W key. So let's take another look with the subsurf model enabled so we can see the visibility of it and then step the views up to 2 and then uh, it's not looking too bad but we still need the leather folds. Now potentially that might sound daunting but uh, don't worry about this uh, we're going to let you in on a secret here. We should be able to get this done in about less than a minute. So in Blender we have uh, this really awesome but not really very widely used feature and it allows you to select several similar parts of a mesh in just seconds. In order to make the folds we need to hide these buttons from the selection that we're going to do. So we're just going to select one and then we're going to do this. Now we just press H to hide those buttons. And now we can select the parts that are going to have the folds. And now we just have to apply a bevel to the selection. So we could do this with Control B and then just extrude it to raise the fold. So we can unhide those buttons there with the Alt H hotkey. And now we need to extrude the edges. So we can Alt right click the first edge loop and then hold Shift and Alt right click the remaining edge loops there just to get those and then E to extrude and then Z to just constrain it along the axis and then just move that straight down and then to just flatten off those bottom edges we can just again press S to scale and then Z and then 0 just to scale them all so that they're all on the same level. We'll smooth up the uh, or at least tighten up the subsurf a little bit higher there by going Control R and then adding in an edge loop and then just move that right close to the very lip of it there now we're going to go around and select all those faces that go around there. Uh, you could kind of do it this way, you can just get fine control over exactly which verts you're going to get. But if you know you're going to do just the perimeter faces there, you can just switch to face mode and then alt right click on the face loop and you'll be able to get that whole thing and then you can press E to extrude and then press shift Z to lock the axis so that it doesn't move on Z and then we can just move that out a little bit just to sort of give out that little bit of border padding there. Then we'll add an edge loop underneath to support the fold. I'm just going to raise it up a little bit more in Z just to tighten that up even more. And also you can add more edge loops in the middle of here to just give you some more volume. So when we scale that out, you'll see. Now we just need to close that hole underneath. Here we'll be doing this with the same method that was used before with the buttons, meaning when we snapped over, uh, we were actually welding at the same time. So in wireframe, we can just border select across those verts to get the whole loop there. And then all we need to do is just extrude and then when we hold control and uh, indicate which vertex we want to snap to, it'll sort of all automatically weld it for us. Now there is another thing that we could do here which is to just select the whole region underneath there and then use spacebar to bring up the grid fill tool. Uh, but this is, I think this is a pretty underutilized sort of option and so it kind of shows a, a good way of doing this if you really want that extra control. Uh, but as I say, grid fill should be able to do this if you're looking for a quick solution. And usually, you probably will. Let's just add an extra fold to the bottom there by again selecting those uh, the face loop that you get at the bottom there. Or we can go around and select it, exactly which verts that we want by alt right clicking on them. But we could just again switch to face select mode and then alt right click on one of those vertical edges within the face loop that you want to select. Then we can press E to extrude and then press S and then shift Z to just expand that out like we did with the first one. Then we'll just go control R and add in an edge loop just to tighten up the way that that's subdividing there at the top. So to curve the mesh let's start by creating a lattice. Lattices deform objects assigned to them and so it could be really handy to do some complex looking models. 
we need to fill all the space that we plan to deform with it. In the lattice settings, we'll just give it an extra edge loop in the middle for us to be able to play with there. So we could just set the U setting to three in the properties window. Then with the cushion selected, we can then go over to the modifiers and add a lattice modifier. The object area should be our lattice that we just created. Now we can tab into the lattice and then select some of the points and then move them around so that we get the kind of curvature that we're looking for on the cushion. The next step will be to make an instanced copy of this to create the back of the chair. So for that we go Alt D instead of Shift D and this way if we change anything on one of the cushions the other one will change with it. With both the lattice and the cushion itself selected, we just then need to uh, move and rotate it into position. So that we can see things in the viewport a little cleaner, we can just move our lattices to another layer. So we can just press, with them selected, we can just then press M and then select the second layer, say. This might be a nice time to just uh, properly name a few of these objects too. Now we'll just center the pivot point on its center of mass uh, by using one of personally my favorite uh, hotkey in Blender, which is the, uh, the claw grip of Control Shift, Alt and C. And then we can just choose origin to center of mass. The next step is to create a cube to make the hardware. We'll just move and scale this into position. Nothing too fancy is happening here. And uh, as you've been introduced to the basic concepts of modeling, I'm sure we can uh, speed things up a bit. So we can just extrude this cube out a little and then curve it around. And then we can add a subsurf modifier to it just to smooth the overall shape of it too. Also in this tool shelf, we'll set the shading to smooth too. So that we're not losing too much of the shape from the subsurf modifier, we're just going to add in an extra edge loop at the bottom and at the top there to preserve some of that angularity. And we'll mirror this so that we only need to model one side. We'll be using the chair as the mirror object and this way the modifier will be using the chair's pivot point for which to uh, mirror across. We're going to want to delete this face before we merge it at the mirror point, otherwise uh, we're going to have some problems there. Also enable the clipping so that the uh, mesh does not cross into the mirrored copy. Then it's just a matter of uh, adding in a couple of extra edge loops or a bevel and then just extruding across and at some of that extrusion point maybe we want to add some extra control loops with the control R so just sliding them across close to where the extrude happens just so that it doesn't smooth away too much of the uh, general shape that we're looking at preserving there. Again, another bevel with control B and then extrude out from the top face to give some support for the seat cushion. You can see things go yellow there for a minute. Some of those edges go yellow as the um, you can initiate the a kind of an edge slide uh, with the shift V shortcut key. You can also press G twice to initiate that as well. And that just allows us to slide along already existing geometry. Same kind of slide that you get after you hit Control R, for example. <laughs> that was the wrong face to extrude from. And uh, Guilherme was so ashamed there that he had to blur the screen. And uh, what I wanted to do, which is what he'll do now, is to extrude from the face above that one instead. And basically what he's looking to do here is uh, continuing the nice smooth curvature that begins from under the seat cushion and out and down onto the ground to form the back legs. So here we're just giving it a squarer look um, and adding some more edge loops. Here we can just go Shift A to add in a simple sun lamp just to give some, just to put some lighting in the scene really, just to see how this looks when it's rendered. And we can quickly switch to rendered view with the Shift Z shortcut key. 
So here we're going to use the edges from the hardware to model the leather straps. This is going to make life a lot easier. So with those two edge loops selected, we can just go Shift D to duplicate them. Then we could extrude them and constrain along the Y axis to just give that a little thickness there. We could select the whole geometry or the loose geometry there in a way, uh, the kind of the element of the mesh that we've got, which is unattached to everything else by just pressing Control L. And then we can separate that from our hardware mesh by pressing P. Now we have a separate object, but there is a little problem with the normals there and we'll need to fix that with Control N just to recalculate them. Then by pressing spacebar we can bring up the solidify tool just to give it a little bit of volume and we can refine the settings there in the bottom of the tool shelf and we need to just select everything there and just correct the normals with Control N. This edge loop we can just slide up just to correct a little of what's going on there with Shift V. And we could do that in a few places actually. Now we need to just bridge those faces. So let's bring up our edges menu with Control E and then select the bridge edge loops. And then we could do that for the bottom bit as well. Then let's just add an extra loop in the middle there and then bring that down. And then one for the back and then bring that back. Let's then down the length, main length of the strap, we'll add an extra edge loop with control R and then we can use our middle mouse wheel to just give that an extra edge loop so that we've got two running down there. Then we can give this an array and then set the count and the relative offset to the uh, sort of thing that we think might look cool. So for the modeling there, we can call that done. So I hope you've learned some useful tricks there along the way. And if there's any additional things that you'd like to know, just hit us up in the comments and we'll return to this with uh, some materials in another part. Uh, but until then, we'll see you next time.